guys, welcome back to The Binger. Is there anything better than kicking back and watching cartoons? Even if you're a fully fledged adult and way too busy to watch them these days, I'll bet my last buck you still have favorites. I'll also bet that you really, really hate some of them too. You're putting me into a bad mood, we. Join us as we take a look at cartoon characters that are hated for crazy reasons. Is your animated enemy on the list? Stick with us and find out. Ooh, me? SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. All right, I know that SpongeBob is largely loved. The show wouldn't be as popular as it is if he wasn't, but bear with me here. While there are those that defend the character with their lives, there are also those that can't stand the little yellow dude. He can be annoying, over the top, and a little hard to digest. So it's not surprising, really. Some religious groups have also taken aim at the Nick cartoon, saying that it promotes homosexuality. It might seem totally far-fetched, but the American Family Association and Focus on Family are both against the cartoon for that reason. SpongeBob creator Steven Hillenburg rebuffed the claims, saying that he always believed the characters to be asexual. He went on to explain that the main message of the show was about tolerance and how we should accept everyone else's differences. He had a point. Unfortunately, his wise words did nothing to sway the organizations who continue to put SpongeBob on blast. Even if it did have the message they're saying it does, would it matter? What's wrong with wanting everyone to be happy, right? On another note, the show did lose some fans around season four when SpongeBob's personality appeared to change. From that point on, he seemed like a wilder, more sporadic and dumbed down version of the sponge he was previously. It didn't dent Nickelodeon's bank balance though, as SpongeBob continues to be the most lucrative show on the books. Lisa Simpson, The Simpsons. Lisa Simpson is stuck in a family full of people that are plain crazy. Her mom has an incredibly addictive personality, her brother is a tearaway delinquent, and her dad, well, her dad is Homer Simpson. There's not really anything else I need to say on that one, is there? I love that wacky yellow family and all, but they're not exactly the Brady Bunch. Over the decades, writers have made it clear that Lisa doesn't really fit into the family unit. Sure, there are moments when we see the love between her and the rest of the characters, but entire plots circle around her being different. To some, it's endearing, but to others, it just exacerbates her irritating traits. Lisa is incredibly intelligent, but when you've got a character like that in a show that's full of stupid, it can become a bugbear for some fans. Compared to the rest of The Simpsons, Lisa has a habit of coming across as a goody-two-shoes tattletale. It's not a good look. She endlessly wants to do the right thing, which is great in theory. When viewers are trying to watch a cartoon that focuses on out there plots, it can be a little distracting though. Quora user Jacqueline Boyd sums it up perfectly and in one fell swoop, saying, quote, she's basically a whining turd that likes jazz. She's not creative or clever at all. She's just a fake. Ouch, don't hold back Jacqueline. Some people in the back didn't hear you. It's sad, but it's true. Good characters have a habit of rubbing people up the wrong way. Scrappy-Doo, Scooby-Doo. Scrappy-Doo should be the ultimate sidekick to Scooby, but he falls short, and not just in stature. The pint-sized dog was introduced into Scooby-Doo after viewing figures started to decrease. Fans were becoming bored with the format of the show, and it was either cancel it or rejuvenate it. Writers decided to go for the latter and introduce the small dog with a big attitude. Unlike his uncle, Scrappy talks clearly and at a fast pace. He's super confident and thinks that he can overcome anything, hence his name. The only trouble is, fans weren't exactly thrilled with the new addition to the show. Scrappy brought with him a different dynamic that was miles away from what viewers had come to know and love. Eventually, the show whittled the characters down to just Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy. Why do people dislike the little guy so much? Your guess is as good as mine, but it has been suggested that it's all about change. If you mess with the format of a long-running series, then you run the risk of alienating fans. Scrappy is still iconic, but he'll never be as well-loved as his uncle or the rest of the Scooby-Doo gang. The pup never had a fighting chance, really. A lot of people blamed the introduction of Scrappy on the disappearance of Fred, Velma, and Daphne, but that happened a year after he first appeared. Quagmire, Family Guy. Hey there, sweetie. How old are you? Okay, so there are a lot of reasons to legitimately hate Quagmire. He's really creepy, and he's literally always talking about women. His mind lives in the gutter 24-7. As far as cartoon characters go, he's everything that pushes people's buttons. There's no disputing that he's morally corrupt, but that's sort of the point. Everyone knows or has known someone that's a little bit like him, and he's just an extreme version of it. Family Guy as a series pushes the envelope of what's acceptable, so of course, there are going to be characters that are gross. 
It's just how it goes. Peter is gross. Meg and Lois are gross in their own way. It's all part and parcel of the series. Seth MacFarlane created it for goodness sake. It's not going to be a series dedicated to saintly people and their kind deeds, is it? No matter how Quagmire gets on the nerves of feminists and, well, everyone, it's time to accept him for what he is. At his core, he's a good guy with some questionable ways. If the world didn't have him, then Family Guy would be a lot less interesting. For starters, we wouldn't have had that episode where Peter accidentally does away with Quagmire's cat. Angelica Pickles, The Rugrats. Cast your mind back to the 90s, when teen spirit deodorant was still cool, and your walls were adorned with boy band posters. <sighs> oh, was that just me? Uh, moving on. If you were a 90s kid, then chances are you watched The Rugrats on more than one occasion. It was a sweet and simple show focusing on the bonds between babies and their parents. Phil and Lil were the awesomely disgusting twins, while Chucky and Tommy were BFFs that would do anything for each other. The babies had one arch enemy, though, the bossy older child, Angelica. Got you in my crutches. Angelica Pickles was mean, rude, arrogant, and thought the world revolved around her. She did whatever she could to make the babies feel miserable, so it's only natural that viewers would dislike her. After all, who likes a bully? It's not the most endearing trait in the world. However, it's easy to forget that this is a kid who's just three years old. Toddlers are moody, mean, and a lot of the time, they don't know their butt from their elbow. If we're being realistic about this, Angelica is just acting like every other kid her age on the planet, albeit to the extreme. If you don't hate your own kids, stop hating on Angelica. She may be spoiled and entitled, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Jerry, Tom and Jerry. This one is a little controversial. Most people agree that Tom from Tom and Jerry is the irritating one. But there are those out there that really dislike Jerry, too. In every single episode of the show, Jerry defeats Tom despite the cat's best efforts. The little Mighty Mouse has the cunning to spoil even the best laid plans, much to Tom's displeasure. Here's the thing, though. If Tom and Jerry hate each other so much, why doesn't one of them just leave? Tom actually lives in the house, so he should be the one to stay, so why isn't Jerry leaving? He's a mouse, and the woman screams every time she sees him. Plus, Tom chases him all the time trying to eat him. I would be out of there like a shot. Jerry could be an attention seeker or an adrenaline junkie that loves the thrill of the chase. The little creature is so incredibly snooty and big for his boots, considering that he's so tiny. Some fanatics think he should have been taken down a peg or three ages ago, but alas, he still lives on to fight another day. The whole cat and mouse thing is what keeps the show running, so without Jerry, it clearly wouldn't work. No matter what camp you're in, you have to admit that he's super intelligent and wouldn't be out of place running a Fortune 500 company. That mouse is ruthless. Dora, Dora the Explorer. I personally can't stand this little cartoon girl. Even talking about this is making me mad. Dora the Explorer stayed on our screens for 14 long years. That's a long time to put up with a character that makes your teeth itch. Even now, parents are subjected to reruns, so the pain never ends. The seven-year-old Latina girl goes around on quests with her purple backpack, making viewers participate in the fun. Kids went wild for it, and it's made for young children, so I guess that makes sense. The unfortunate thing is that the adults can't escape it either. Dora talks directly to the viewer, but it's always so darn patronizing. Oh, you found it. You're the best. It's on a TV screen, Dora. It's not that hard, even for four-year-olds. In case you haven't got it, I just can't cope with Dora. I'm not the only one either. Do a quick Google search, and you'll find scores of people saying exactly the same thing. This character frequently appears on most hated lists, so clearly there's an issue here. That being said, she's still a lot better than the likes of the Teletubbies. Smurfette, the Smurfs. The Smurfs was one of the most popular cartoons of its day and continues to be loved the world over. The teeny tiny blue people that live in the woods spend their time frolicking through the daisies and fending off the evil wizard Gargamel. No matter how hard he tries, Gargamel can never quite get one up on the insufferable white hat wearing guys. He tried to infiltrate the Smurf village by creating Smurfette, the only girl. However, she soon came to love the Smurfs and switched sides. Smurfette is largely everything that is wrong with females in cartoons, at least back in the day anyway. She's about as brave as a cat in a tub full of water and always relies on the rest of the Smurfs to save her. 
Her voice is so high that only dogs can hear it. All the Smurfs go wild for Smurfette and her long blonde hair and short dress. What she adds in value to the community is, well, nothing. She adds nothing of value except for really long eyelashes. I'm all for more female characters, but this one should have been left on the shelf with the other really bad ideas of the 80s, like leotards. It might be a really silly reason to be against a character, but thousands of people share this exact same opinion. Squidward, SpongeBob SquarePants. Nearly all the characters on SpongeBob are annoying in one way or the other. They've all got really extreme personalities, from Sandy's narcissistic tendencies to Patrick's lack of intelligence. Squidward tends to get a rougher deal than most because he's just so miserable all the time. SpongeBob has tried so hard over the years to get his neighbor to cheer up, but Squidward isn't having it. The only time he really seems content is when he's alone doing his own thing, but it never lasts long. So fans tend to put the character on blast for bringing down the happy-go-lucky nature of the show. Without Squidward, though, viewers wouldn't have anything to measure SpongeBob's craziness against. Maybe he's there for that very reason so that there's a stark contrast between happiness and sadness, light and dark. If he wasn't part of the show, then Bikini Bottom might just be full of crackpot characters and no balance. In a lot of ways, Squidward is the most relatable. Well, for me anyway. He hates other people, too much noise, and wants to sit back and relax all day without being disturbed. Is that too much to expect, I ask you? What do you think? Do these guys deserve what they get, or should we cut them some slack? Sound off in the comments. Before you go, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.